right, so we're talking about kindness today. And as the video said, it starts all rainbows and puppies, and then it gets really hard. And um, part of what I want to um, look at with you is a way that I have help, gotten help in being kind. I have um, many mentors <laughs> in the job that I do. One of them um, is a check-in on um, who helps me look at things from a family systems perspective and to try to get some space because kindness requires space. It requires us to take a step back to look at things differently. It requires us to slow down our reaction and our immediate impulse and our immediate desires. It asks us to see a wider picture, to remember more, and it asks us to do some really hard work um, and being honest about ourselves and back at that scripture, you know, the log that we have to remove from our own eyes before we remove the splinter from others, but it's so much more fun and easier to do that splinter than the log. And so kindness requires space. And part of the way um, that I have gotten space on times where I've needed conflict um, is to understand the world in triangles. Because there are triangles everywhere. Where two or three are gathered, there's God and a triangle. Um, and we all know triangles. We've had experience with them. Um, we know them when they get tangled and messy and impossible. We call that politics. Um, and often that comes with an eye roll of like, can we just not do politics? Can we keep it out? Can we do something different? Because wherever there are different people and different ideas and different desires and different visions, there's going to be a tangle of how we coordinate and connect all of those. And so wherever there are human beings... There are triangles. Just any parent, two parents and a kid come into the picture. Let's two people and a dog come into the picture. Um, and there is a triangle of what the best approach is going to be and what it looks like or what it doesn't, right? There are going to be that with ideas that's going to happen with a pastor and a church and a vision. Um, there are always going to be triangles and kindness is how we use them. So are we going to um, have a triangle of me, co-worker that I cannot stand, and um, the current issue at stake, we'll call it the calendar. Um, or here, let's make it a person. Let's make it the boss. And so that what happens to the boss when I will own, I'm done talking with this coworker. Mm -mm, she's not worth it. Forget about it. Um, and so I'm just going to keep telling my boss or another coworker, you know, all about her. And then I'm going to have that person go tell her what she needs to do um, because she's not worth my time anymore. And then that coworker is like, no, I don't think so. Oh, you tell her. And all of a sudden, it's just a mess, right? That's why we say, like, detriangle yourself. Get out of the middle um, and, and help um, make a connection here. So I want to look at um, our scripture story today um, in terms of triangles. So, Matt, would you be able to go back to the Exodus passage? And we're going to start with a triangle of God... And Moses and the Israelites. And the passage from last week um, was the Ten Commandments. What we didn't talk about was the end of that passage where God comes down. Um, and there's all kinds of natural phenomena and presence. And the Israelites are scared. 
and they tell Moses to go and intermediate with God for them because they're scared. And Moses is like, it's okay. You don't have to fear. God is just showing you God's presence so you can know who God is and not sin, want to follow, the, and know the power that is, that is present. But Israel is like, no way you got to do this for us. And so God's still there offering connection, but Israel's like, nope, we're going to connect through Moses. Um, we just can't do that. But then what happens? Moses is delayed. Moses is like, okay, well, I'll serve as the intermediary. So goes up on the mountain to connect with God. Um, I should have made this triangle smaller. Um, to make a vision. Right? To discern a vision. What's going to happen? Um, and so now all of a sudden, the Israelite, Israel isn't connected to Moses anymore either. They don't know if he's dead. They don't know what's happening. They don't have any access to God or to the vision that's happening. So that's a really anxious place to be that isolated. So they can't find Moses. They can't reconnect there. Instead of thinking of another way to draw near to God, what do they do? They went to Aaron. Okay, okay, we'll get another triangle. Aaron, we need some help. And then, what did they decide? Yep, and then out comes the golden calf. Out it popped. Who knew? We need something. We need something to connect to. So there we go. So now we have this whole triangle off floating this other way. And then here's God and Moses and their vision. And there's this complete disconnect. And so here comes the parental moment of all parental moments in scripture. What does God tell Moses? Your people. Can we bring up the next? Um, so, oh. Did I, where, oh crap, I've missed it. Anyway, so God goes <laughs> and looks at Moses and he's like, the people that you brought out of the land of Egypt, your people, has any parent been, been like, not my child anymore, that's your child. Um, so that goes away from God. God is now no longer, nope, I'm done. Moses, it is all you. So now here's Moses trying to maintain a connection to the vision and to God and now it's all his work to then reestablish a connection with Israel, except now he's got to reestablish a connection with Aaron because that's going on. And then all of a sudden there's a calf down here as well, and it gets really messy really fast, right? And so we're all triangled, and it's a really hard thing to figure out. Kindness requires space. Moses, now, can I just give a scripture disclaimer? Um, God is acting very humanly here in this passage. Um, I really don't think that this is how God actually operates. Um, because if so, that means God has a shorter fuse than a lot of us humans. And that just doesn't feel quite right in my theology. Um, but... What this does give us is a really helpful insight um, and a very natural thing um, that happens when we're frustrated and when we're done trying and done being kind. Um, so if we can take it as a human lesson, we have Moses who intervenes and asks God to not leave Israel, um, to remember the wider picture to reconnect with the vision from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. See, this triangle was already here. It just wasn't in use because of everything that started happening over here. And Moses asked for a reconnection. Now, God could have chosen not to, but God did choose to reconnect with that vision. And God chose to reconnect with the Israelites 
um, and not leave them. And whether that was because of how that would look to the Egyptians, which is a whole nother triangle in and of itself, um, or not, we'll leave the anthropomorphic reasons aside um, and, and know that God's a little bit beyond um, that imagery and that presentation. But also know that the kindness of coming back, the space that Moses gave God to remember what was important, to remember where God wanted to be and how God wanted to work, um, and to have then the courage to reconnect with someone who had chosen to not connect. And that's, that's what happens with kindness, right? Do we react with what's been given or not been given to us? Or do we wait and get some space to go beyond what's happened and bring something new into the picture? There's a lot of work that's going to be happening um, in, and that are, has already been happening. But... We've started to know each other now for over a year, and so we've done some of that connecting work, and that connecting work will continue. It always does. Um, but it also means we have a foundation to start getting into some of the core work of deciding who we want to be together in this stage as Epworth. And so we're going to be, we are in a triangle of pastor and congregation and vision. And as pastor, I am connected to the vision. I, it is my responsibility to do all of the prayer that I can, all of the discernment that I can, to stay open and listen as I can um, so that I can best discern the vision um, that's possible. And it's my up to me to stay connected with you all and visits and listening campaigns and coming together and hearing how things are. That, that is what I can affect and where I can be present. What I can't do is tell you all or control how you all connect with the vision or what your prayer and discernment is. And that's the hardest piece of kindness is where we focus. Because not only does kindness require us space to get beyond and remember what triangle to pay attention to, kindness also requires us to do our work. Because it's going to be a lot easier for me, Frida, I'm going to pick on you because you're right in my line of sight. Um, it's going to be a lot easier for me to be like, that Frida, if she would just get it together with the bazaar in this way, then the vision would be set. And if she could just understand this and go and do it finally, then everything would be okay and we'd be able to have more people in this church and everything would be fixed. Except that means I'm going to be spending all my time over here. And am I ultimately ever going to be able to tell Frida how to think and how to act? And so then what's going to not get done? Any of my own prayer and discernment, any of my connection with Frida and with everyone else. And that's going to create even more of a problem. I can't affect how Frida connects with the vision. I can affect how I connect with the vision because of my connection with Frida. I can listen and I can have the moments where I'm like, oh, that's a good point. We're going to have to change this. Or uh, I hear you, that is just not my truth. So we're going to have to figure out a way to stay in connection um, because that's not working for me at all. Um, and you do your prayer and discernment and try to figure out what it is and we'll sort our way forward. But that's not a place where I can be in at the moment. Relating together like this requires a lot of work and requires a lot of space and requires the ability to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And that is not something that comes easily. Um, it's exhausting, quite frankly. 
And so we're going to need the Moseses in our lives who step in and remind us that we need space and that we need to focus on a different triangle that we got hooked. We are going to need the grace with each other to be able to know that we're not going to be able to work from our best every single time. Um, but that we believe in each other and in a vision and in God enough um, that we won't live in the moments of brokenness, but that we will live in the moments like God did in remembering a promise to generations of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, enough to get us through the moment of anxiety and of conflict. And there will be ways that we can help each other lower our anxiety helpfully. There will be people that are triangled in. I'm going to have all kinds of mentors out here and other clergy folks who help me understand the vision and help me um, know myself better. And that's going to be the same for you all as the congregation, too. And that's going to be the same um, as we continue working, what it is this vision will be. This past week, our leadership um, have been doing the small group training, and we're um, in the vision port of trying to discern and figure out. We know we want to get to know each other better. We know we want more than two small groups offered a week. We want a goal of having a small group every day of the week. What we're trying to figure out is how that looks. Is it going to be a curriculum base? Is it going to be a relational base of um, sharing what has happened in our life and how that has affected our faith with God? So are we going to start from scripture and go to our faith journey or are we going to start from life in our faith journey and then go to scripture? And it will be some kind of combination of all of that, but we've got some really strong passions and thoughts on what exactly that will be and look like. And so I would ask um, for your prayers um, as we figure that out and talk with any small group leaders who are meeting. If you could raise your hand, talk with folks, um, pray with folks. I did small group leaders who are meeting on Thursdays. Raise your hands, please. So talk with folks. If you're curious, if you are thinking, I know what I would like to see in my life, um, that would be, uh, that is a support that I really need to give space to help me be kind, then come and talk to us about that. We need to be in this together. And there will be times where we will be able to do that in full kindness, and there will be times when we're not able to. Um, and the journey of faith and the journey of discipleship is one of being able to confess those times where we have broken off the triangle in unhelpful ways, where we have set up our own calf vision um, because the other one requires too much work from us and we're just not there. But there are ways to say we're not there without melting down all of our gold and using our resources to something that won't be helpful and out popping a golden calf that creates a whole nother set of triangles way farther away um, from, the, from the triangle of vision and God that we were called to in the first place. So let's be in this journey together. Let's figure out a way to develop the spiritual fruit of kindness in a way that we are committed to bringing more space into our lives, space that will help us see beyond our immediate anxiety, help that will enable us to do the kind of internal and personal work that we have to do to be more available, to see more clearly, and to be able to have a little bit more comfort and the uncomfortable so that God has a little bit more space to work with and that we can move forward together. So here's to the discipleship journey. Here's to when it's rainbows and puppies and really fun and lovely and everything is clicking together. And here's also to the moments where it's hard and it would be easier to just not. And may we be the kind of family that knows how to be together in each of those times. To kindness.